Hello, this is Professor James Strickler, and this is a course in American government. This lesson is from Unit 6, about interest groups and political parties. And this is Lesson 7, concerning outside lobbying. In this lesson, you'll learn about what outside lobbying is. You'll learn about the methods of outside lobbying. You'll learn about grassroots politics and about astroturfing. In previous lessons, we began to learn about the methods that interest groups use. In the last lesson, we learned about inside lobby. In this lesson, we'll learn about outside lobby. In the previous lesson, you were taught that lobbying is about the activities that people undertake to somehow influence public officials to produce the policies that they prefer. In particular, we talked about inside lobbying being person-to-person -person contact, where lobbyists approach government officials and try to persuade them to do what their interest group wants. Outside lobbying is similar in that interest groups are trying to persuade government officials to do certain things, but rather than approaching the government officials directly, they instead try to persuade the public to change public opinion, and then have the re officials respond to that public opinion because they want to get reelected and implement the, the favored policy of the interest group. Basically, if the interest group can convince the public to endorse what they want, they believe that politicians will then follow through and do it. There are four methods used in outside lobbying. We're going to look at each of these one at a time. The first one is the use of what are called media events. An example of a media event can be seen here. We have the interest group called PETA, which stands for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, get some models to pose naked with a sign saying that they'd rather go naked than wear fur. They do this purely to get the attention of the media. The media will show up with a bunch of models traipsing around on the street naked. They'll take photographs, they'll run a story about it, and in that way, the interest group gets attention being paid to their cause, whatever it is. In this case, trying to get people to stop wearing fur. A second way that interest groups can try to influence uh, public opinion and thereby influence what government does is through what we call direct contact. Direct contact is when the interest group reaches out directly to the voters to try to change their opinion. Traditionally, this was done through direct mailers or phone calls made to people's homes. Here's a couple of examples of things sent in the mail to people from interest groups to try to get them to believe certain ways about certain issues that then the government can address. With modern technology, though, this method has expanded to social media. Uh, interest groups may send out tweets or posts, posts on Facebook, for example, or use other social media platforms to reach voters directly to try to persuade them to change their minds about issues so that then they'll put on pressure on government officials to adopt policies that the interest groups prefer. A third method used by interest groups is mass advertising. What we're referring to here is commercials or advertisements in newspapers, that sort of thing. Here we have a very scary looking commercial presented on this slide where a frightening looking uh, Uncle Sam character represents the government taking over healthcare and then administering an exam to a very uncomfortable patient. The idea is to persuade people to think that government involvement in healthcare will be uncomfortable and bad for them. This is the kind of thing that interest groups do. They run commercials like this to, again, try to change the opinion of the public, which will then, they hope, change the opinion of lawmakers. The last way that uh, interest groups may engage in outside lobbying to alter public opinion is through protests and demonstrations. Here's an example of a demonstration taking place in Washington, D.C where the protesters are complaining about the possibility of a oil and gas pipeline being run from Canada down to the Gulf of Mexico through the United States. They're hoping by having a large crowd there complaining about something at the same time, 
the lawmakers will take notice, and those politicians will then be persuaded to adopt policies that the big crowd wants. Now, when interest groups organize protests, they want to lawmakers to have the impression that these things are a result of what we call grassroots politics. Grassroots politics is referring to the idea that whatever political activity is taking place out there among the people is naturally occurring from the bottom up. In other words, the common everyday voters are the ones who are getting upset about this and organizing themselves to complain about it. If politicians become convinced that uh, what they're seeing is truly grassroots, that the public is rising up against them, they may be more willing to respond, because remember, they're trying to get votes to get reelected. They may be more willing resp to respond to those protests than they would if they knew they're just being staged by interest groups. So sort of the opposite of grassroots politics is what is known as astroturfing. This is where things are organized from the top down. There's uh, officials within some group out there that, that decide they want to stage something that looks like it's coming from the public. They want to fake grassroots politics, essentially. And so this is known by a term that refers to fake grass, astroturf. An example of astroturfing can be seen in this picture, where a political activist is preparing mass-produced signs to then distribute to people at a rally. It's not like the people themselves prepared the signs and showed up with them because they were so upset and energized and organized for this event. Instead, it's someone trying to organize the people there and have them get out the message that the person with the signs wants to be gotten out. Another even clearer example of this is seen in these uh, advertisements on a, post, on a poster in uh, San Francisco, where it's actually asking for people to uh, call in about earning money as acting as professional protesters. Yes, they really do that kind of thing. These interest groups will go out and hire people. They will load them into buses. They will hand them signs and they will drop them off at the place that they want the protesting to take place and have them march around pretending like they're really upset about this thing. And then when their shift is done, they get back on the bus, they get their money and they go home. So now let's review what you learned about in this lesson. Who does outside lobbying seek to directly influence? Is it elected politicians or is it bureaucratic officials? Or is it other lobbyists? Or is it public opinion that they're trying to influence? Outside lobbying is trying to directly influence public opinion, and then through that, indirectly influence the uh, activities of elected officials. Carrying a protest sign while naked is an example of what kind of method for outside lobbying? Is it direct contact, a public demonstration, a media event, or mass advertising? It's clearly a media event. The reason the protesters are naked is to attract the attention of the media. It's to get their signs on TV is essentially what they're doing. What is grassroots politics? Is it politics that rolls over the opposition? Is it led by politicians? Is it initiated by interest group? Interest groups, excuse me. Or does it rise up from the people? Real grassroots politics rises up from the people. Just the common everyday voters get upset about something and then mobilize themselves to do something about it. What is astroturfing? Is it fake public support? Is it restarting a campaign? Is it covering up crimes? Or is it hiding public support? Astroturfing is faking public support. That completes this lesson. The next lesson will be from Unit 6 also. It'll be Lesson 8 about electoral activities.